lost a sister through suicide. She was married and she had four children. In a sense, um, so society failed her, her church failed her, and, and yes, her family failed her. Tragic, tragic. It is World Suicide Prevention Day, which is wonderful, of course, but, well, is anything really, really changing? Casey Bennett is a young producer at Sun U. She works with us, or with, with me, and um, absolutely candid with you. The other day she was going on air. She was going to be on air with, with Jerry Agar. And I said, oh, what, what are you going on for? And she said, well, it's to talk about suicide. And I was very hesitant, but I said, well, had you tried? And she said, yes, I had. I had no idea. Well, thank God she failed. She joins us now on this uh, particular day, this special day in a way. You're 21 now. Yes. You were 19 when you tried to take your own life. Right. You have so much. I know this is all absurd talk from someone who doesn't understand, but you have so much going for you, and you tried to end it all. Why? Um, honestly, I have no idea what really sparks. I mean, I, I had a specific incident that sparked this depression, but in terms of depression, which is why I ended up ultimately committing or attempting suicide, mm. I'm not sure what sparks it. I have, I, you're right, I do have so many things in my life going for me, and I did at that time as well. But unfortunately, these things are irrelevant when it comes to the issue of mental illness and suicide. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter what you have going for you. It doesn't matter how many things that you have in your life that you should be happy for. All you can feel is sadness and yeah. despair. Yeah. I think pe people who, who try to rationalize have got the whole thing backwards. A mutual friend of ours, Andrew, Andrew Lawton, mm -hmm. who comes on, on this network and, and this show, uh, he tried to end his life a few years ago. I had no idea. His father called me. His father's virtually in tears. When you told me, I said to you, how did your parents react? Because I have, I've got two daughters, well, four children, but two daughters, and one is very close to your age. And I think it would just be devastating to think you'd failed. You'd let your child down, the person you're meant to protect, and you let that person down. Yeah, uh, I mean, conversations I've had with my parents, this is how they feel. They feel guilty. They yeah. think that they somehow failed me, and this isn't the case. I think parents have to realize when they have children who attempt suicide, it isn't their fault. It's mm -hmm. not something that they've done. It, they shouldn't feel guilty. It's not something that they can control necessarily, mm -hmm. especially because a lot of the people who commit suicide or attempt suicide do it on impulse. So there's really nothing that you can do aside right. from try to intervene early on to prevent it from happening. Well, let's talk about, we're going to put up, by the way, the, the website and phone number of, of, of places you can call and contact. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, it, it, it's irrational by nature to, to end your life. To so just, it, It's easier to end it all than to, to go on. I've known several people now in my life have taken their own lives, and every one of them shocked me. I had no idea. Um, it's not the person who maybe is, is, is very down, they're depressed, they're, they're suffering. I mean, that's something they can almost try and overcome. Mm -hmm. If, if you're feeling in any way like this, go to your doctor, get on medication, get help. No shame, no stigma. Were there any warning signs with you? Um, yes, there were. I did start to, I mean, I stopped eating. I stopped going to classes. I was in university at the time. I stopped going to class. Yeah. I was sleeping up to 20 hours a day. Isn't that a classic sign of depression? It is. Um, but unfortunately, in my case, I was so far away from home and I wasn't communicating with my parents because I felt so depressed. And part of it was I didn't want to worry them. So there were definitely warning signs, but I'm not sure that my parents <clears throat> believed or expected that it would ever get to the point that it did. Mm. You survived, thank goodness. What mm -hmm. were you found? Uh, yeah, it was found actually by a friend in my dorm room who rushed to tell her RA, and I was rushed to hospital from that point. Right. After that, were things very different? I mean, did you ever think of, of trying it again? Um, no, fortunately I haven't. It was a, str a very um, difficult recovery after that. There was a brief period after I attempted and I had realized that I'd survived where I had wished that I hadn't. Yeah. But since then, I've really been working on my mental state, my depression, things like that. And I'm trying to remind myself every day, you know, life is beautiful. Life is worth living. And there's really no reason that I need to put my parents and my friends and myself through yeah. that again. When you get to be 55, life's terrible. <laughs> but seriously, then, you're, you're a joy to work with. No one would ever have thought this about you. Um, is there, though, and, and it's wonderful you, 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 you're prepared to speak about this, because there is stigma. Yes. Um, you, you can come through 
cancer or a heart attack or a terrible car accident and people say well that's wonderful well done you, you come through a, a, a mental illness which mm -hmm. is what it is and and you try and take your own life and there can be a stigma getting insurance for example uh, maybe even get, getting a loan there, there can be challenges employment I mean, people mm -hmm. might say well i'm not sure if we want to employ this person Right, and it's it's unfortunate that, this, unfortunate that this has to be the way that it is. Nobody is afraid to talk about cancer. Nobody yeah. is afraid to talk about, you know, I have the flu or I was off work uh, yesterday because I was sick. But when it comes to mental health, suddenly there's this issue where nobody can speak about it because, and I've experienced it myself, there's this... Um, this rationale that if you are mentally ill, that you may be dangerous, that you are, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, you may be dangerous, that you are always sad, so you're not somebody that you would uh, be associated with normally. Mm. It's, it's awful, and unfortunately, this just isn't the case. Of course it's not. Uh, people with mental health issues are generally more often victims than perpetrators. Yes. I mean, that's a complete myth, and it's a dangerous one. Uh, is there anything you would say to a young person watching now who feels desperate? Call 911. If you feel desperate enough that you feel they need to take your own life, call 911, go to the hospital, tell them how you're feeling. Um, there's no shame in it. There's no reason to be afraid. It, just get help because honestly, suicide really is not the answer. Uh, it isn't. Of course, going to a hospital with, with mental health challenges, mm -hmm. although they may try to help, that they're overworked. Getting to see a psychiatrist can take a long time. It's not yes. always that easy, is it? No, unfortunately not. But with our healthcare system, and I've been through all of this before, the fastest way to get uh, to a psychiatrist and to get the help that you need is to go through 911 through really? the is emergency it? room. Okay. And even then, it's a two to three month wait. Right. And the, the I mean, I, I know people who work in the psychiatric field, and, and new generation of medication has changed the way they work. There's no shame at all in going on, on these sort of medications. Mm -hmm. Just get the help you would. If you had a bone sticking out of your arm, you wouldn't say, oh, I'll, I'll leave. It'll be okay in the morning. Right. It won't bloody well be okay in the morning. You've right. got to get this seen too. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Michael.